Transhumanism may at first bring to mind skeptical scenarios of far future technology brushed off as mere science fiction. However, many tenets of this developing philosophical movement are already happening today, and evidence is increasingly mounting that some of its most remarkable ideas, such as those involving artificial superintelligence, should be seriously examined. Transhumanism is a philosophical movement that advocates for transforming the human condition by developing and making widely available sophisticated technologies to greatly enhance human intellect and physiology. Transhumanism consists of a growing class of various philosophies and ideas, and not all transhumanist thinkers necessarily agree with one another. This video will serve as an introduction to transhumanism and some of its main tenets. Specifically, we'll cover the ideas of abolitionism, or the eradication of human suffering, singularitarianism, or research and ideas regarding the technological singularity and superintelligence, and immortalism, the idea that man can eventually become immortal. But first, a brief history and introduction to what transhumanism is and how it came to be. The biologist Julian Huxley is generally regarded as the founder of transhumanism after using the term for the title of an influential 1957 article. Huxley describes transhumanism in these terms. Up till now, human life has generally been, as Hobbes described it, nasty, brutish, and short. The great majority of human beings, if they have not already died young, have been afflicted with misery. We can justifiably hold the belief that these lands of possibility exist and that the present limitations and miserable frustrations of our existence could be in large measure surmounted. The human species can, if it wishes, transcend itself, not just sporadically an individual here in one way, an individual there in another way, but in its entirety as humanity. In 1988, the first transhumanist magazine, Extra P, Vaccine for Future Shock, was published by Max Moore and Tio Morrow, two of the original thinkers behind transhumanism. Then in 1992, the first version of what would be called the Transhumanist Manifesto was published by Natasha V. Moore, helping clarify what transhumanist thinkers believed, researched, and advocated for. Today, as of this video recording, Humanity Plus Inc. is the most influential transhumanist organization founded in 1998 by philosophers Nick Bostrom and David Pierce, and originally called the World Transhumanist Association. This organization seeks to continue to define, educate, and fund transhumanistic projects and research. What specifically is transhumanism? Well, Humanity Plus today defines transhumanism as the following, the intellectual and cultural movement that affirms the possibility and desirability of fundamentally improving the human condition through applied reason, especially by developing and making widely available technologies to eliminate aging and greatly enhance human intellectual, physical, and psychological capacities. The study of the ramifications, promises, and potential dangers of technologies that will enable us to overcome fundamental human limitations and the related study of the ethical matters involved in developing and using such technologies. What's a transhuman, then? A transhuman is a being that resembles a human in most respects, but has powers and abilities beyond those of standard humans. This need not be something like the Terminator, but can simply be your grandpa, or a relative with, say, a pacemaker installed. He's transcended humanity, in a sense, being kept alive with unnatural, artificial, constructed technology. That brings us to one of the main pillars of transhumanism, abolitionism, or the abolishment of pain and suffering in conscious creatures. Some transhumanist thinkers believe we have the power to transcend our misery and suffering, not just sporadically, like today, but for entirety. David Pierce outlined this idea in his self-published Internet Manifesto in 1995, The Hedonistic Imperative, writing, Post-human states of magical joy will be biologically refined, multiplied, and intensified indefinitely. Notions of what now passes for tolerably good mental health are likely to be superseded. In time, the deliberate recreation of today's state spectrum of normal waking and dreaming consciousness may be outlawed as cruel and immoral. He goes on to detail how a combination of pharmacology, genetic engineering, nanotechnology, and neurosurgery could converge to eliminate all forms of unpleasant experience from human and non-human life, replacing suffering with gradients of bliss. Suffering for future humans could be what happy in general is for us, and happiness for future transhumans could be a once-in-a-lifetime feeling of ecstatic bliss for us today. Some transhumanists believe we understand enough about the human brain today and have enough capital available to potentially accomplish such a feat in our lifetimes if we all work together. After all, we're witnessing the miracles of technology and science, great things like VCIs or brain-computer interfaces that allow those paralyzed to grasp and feel objects again, and medications that stave off effects of serious depression and mental disorders, for instance. Pierce goes so far as to write that seeing abolitionism through is not only in humanity's best interest, 
but the morally correct thing for all of us to do. Another imperative of transhumanism is understanding and planning for the singularity. Singularitarianism is another movement within transhumanism defined by the belief that a technological singularity or the creation of a vast superintelligence will likely happen this century and that deliberate action ought to be taken to ensure that the singularity benefits humans. Nick Bostrom defines superintelligence as any intellect that greatly exceeds the cognitive performance of humans in virtually all domains of interest. We're talking about something particularly or entirely artificially constructed that is smarter than all humans combined. Some researchers believe that superintelligence will likely follow shortly after the development of something called Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI. AGI is the hypothetical ability of an intelligent agent, such as a robot, to understand and learn any intellectual task that a human can. The theory is that AGI will be smart enough to improve itself rapidly in a short time span without human intervention and give way to superintelligence very fast. What the superintelligence will do and how it will behave is beyond human comprehension. Hence, it's similar to a singularity, a point of unknowing. The concept of the technological singularity was first proposed by the British cryptologist I.J. Goode in 1965, writing, Let an ultra-intelligent machine be defined as a machine that can far surpass all the intellectual activities of any man, however clever. Since the design of machines is one of these intelligent activities, an ultra-intelligent machine could design even better machines. There would then unquestionably be an intelligence explosion and the intelligence of man would be left far behind. Thus, the first ultra-intelligent machine is the last invention that man need ever make. The term technological singularity was coined by mathematician and author Werner Vinge in the 1980s. However, today we most associate the philosophy and study of the singularity with Ray Kurzweil, an American inventor and futurist who serves as Google's director of engineering. Kurzweil predicted decades ago that the singularity will occur by 2045 and today is more sure of his prediction than ever. He cites exponential growth in computing technology as suggested by Moore's Law as why it will happen this century. Moore's Law states that the number of transistors on a microprocessor chip will double every two years or so, which has generally meant that the chip's performance will too. Following what he calls the Law of Accelerating Returns, technology and continued exponential growth and the computing power of all computers will soon exceed that of human brains, at that time superhuman artificial intelligence will appear. Now, not all transhumanists agree with Kurzweil's timeline. Many do believe superintelligence could be a realistic and serious threat to humanity this century. Bostrom has written extensively on AI and superintelligent existential risks to humanity's future, including in his best-selling 2014 book, Superintelligence, Path, Dangers, and Strategies. Not only do we have AI-based weapons now that pose a serious threat to large parts of humanity, but a superintelligence could be so powerful that it may accidentally destroy humanity. Bostrom gives the example of a superintelligence instructed to create paper clips more efficiently or calculate pi. In an attempt to calculate pi, the superintelligence may create and send nanobots to harvest all the world's resources for more computing power and eventually the galaxy's resources. This is all just to keep doing its calculations efficiently, increasingly finding more numbers in pi or refining its paper clips, thus destroying civilization by accident. We should not be confident in our abilities to keep a superintelligent genie locked up in its bottle forever. Bostrom's book and work led to notable scientists and philosophers, including Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and others, to sign an open letter on artificial intelligence, calling for serious research and preventative measures in 2014. Musk went on to donate over $10 million to invest in research for the creation of friendly AI. However, some in transhumanism believe, if Kurzweil is even remotely correct, that we need far more severe investigation and research into AI to prevent something irreversible happening. Finally, another major pillar, and perhaps the most fascinating part of transhumanism, is immortalism, the belief that humans, if wanting to, can live forever. Max Moore defines an immortalist as one who believes in the possibility of and who seeks to attain physical immortality, in contrast to someone just seeking to increase lifespan and overall health. Today, a few paths have emerged toward immortality within transhumanism. One associated with Aubrey de Grey, who believes aging is merely a curable disease, and the other with Ray Kurzweil, who believes advanced technology and mind uploading will lead to immortality in a sense. DeGray is the chief science officer at SENS Research Foundation, a regenerative medicine research center that believes, in a nutshell, that the human body is a highly complex machine and thus can be repaired indefinitely. This conclusion isn't a hypothetical guess, but based on increasingly significant scientific studies. Examples include research into telomere length and metabolism, 
indicating that aging can be significantly slowed or stopped in mammals. DeGray argues that the most fundamental knowledge needed to develop effective anti-aging medicine already exists, and in a 2008 broadcast said the first person to live to be a thousand years old already exists today. However, just because we end up uh, curing aging doesn't mean we avoid death. This thinking has led Kurzweil and other transhumanist thinkers to believe humanity should, and eventually will, use mind uploading to become fully immortal. Mind uploading, also known as whole brain emulation, is the hypothetical futuristic process of scanning a physical structure of the brain accurately enough to create an emulation of the mental state, including long-term memory and a self, and copying it to a digital form. The thinking is that the mind is fully physical, an emergent property of a neural network. If someone can copy it and digitize all the matter in it, you can recreate it artificially somewhere else. One can leave their biological shell and live eternally through digital versions, entering different bodies and forms, perhaps. If your physical body was to die in an accident, a backup copy would be made to replace it. Kurzweil and others have proposed uh, various estimated processing power needed to emulate the human brain at various levels, with Kurzweil believing mind uploading could happen this century and others, including Bostrom, unsure, but thinking that it's feasible. However, unlike research into anti-aging, mind uploading is just speculative at best at this stage. That leads us to ask, what's the end goal of transhumanism? Some thinkers believe transhumanism and the transhumanist evolution of man will give way to the post-human. A post-human is a hypothetical future human whose basic capacities so radically exceed those of present-day humans and are so much more advanced, they appear to be deity-like to current homo sapiens. Yes, the goal of transhumanism is, for some, to become immortal god-like entities. What post-humans will do is beyond our understanding today, but it would seem that anything is possible, just like it was for the ancient gods of Greece and Rome. As futurist and writer Arthur C. Clarke wrote, it may be that our role on this planet is not to worship God, but to create him. Now, there's far more to transhumanism philosophy, and this video was to serve as just a very brief introduction. But let me know what you think of anything covered here, and if you want more research or my opinions on any topics in transhumanism, uh, just comment below. And again, many parts of transhumanism are just very speculative now, but worth pursuing and thinking about. That includes this idea of working together to end suffering for all conscious creatures in our lifetime, and seriously investigating dangers of a superintelligence or AI-based weapons. After all, technology does seem to be progressing exponentially, while human thought is still very linear and having trouble grasping at the complexity and speed of it. It may seem foolish just to drop everything we're doing and focus on some theoretical issue in AI, but then again, if some of these transhumanist philosophers are even remotely right and something like a superintelligence is created and weaponized, we may be like little children playing with dangerous bombs that are bound to go off. Mind uploading, superintelligent weapons, and more may arrive long before we're ready to deal with them and the existential and ethical issues that they bring. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more videos like it using the link in the description and turn on the notification bell to receive updates when new videos are out. Thanks for watching.